Dee Watkins here with Salon TV, and today I'll be joined by Tony, Emmy, and Golden Globe award-winning actor Jeffrey Wright, along with Army veteran and founder of Life in Victory, April Harris, here to discuss their new film, We Are Not Done Yet. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. We Are Not Done Yet, produced by Wright and featuring Harris, is a documentary that follows 10 U.S. veterans and active duty service members who come together at the USO Warrior and Family Center in Bethesda, Maryland, for a workshop led by poet Seema Riza and community building artworks with the purpose of using words to heal the trauma that comes with service. Yeah. The writing is beyond beautiful. Um, some of the poetry, I, I can say that, I teach in the MFA program, wow. so like, I, I get to say that. <laughs> but, it, but it's beautiful. How did you get involved with the project? Well, um, I, you know, over time, I became increasingly um, curious about veterans issues mm -hmm. uh, from certain experiences that I had. I, I had. Uh, relationships that I built with uh, some former uh, uh, senior officers mm -hmm. in the U.S. Army, uh, both of whom were uh, Vietnam veterans. We ended up starting a foundation together doing work in Sierra Leone mm -hmm. and uh, spending time with them, spending time with the folks we work with in Sierra Leone. The first time I went there was during um, a ceasefire in the middle of that war and going to a war zone just kind of shattered some complacency in me. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, things... Uh, uh, around security and around the people who take up uh, the call to uh, to restore order when security falls away, all of these things just combine to lead me to uh, to be a little more curious, a little more sensitive. And I was doing a group of uh, readings called Theater of War. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a guy named Brian Dorries who started this to have conversations around PTSD as they relate to the Greek tragedies, uh, using stories uh, of Ajax, uh, for example, mm -hmm. who comes back from war and goes on this psychotic episode. Brian's argument is that that's, a, that's the Greeks examining PTSD in a way that we don't in our society. So there were a number of things led me to it. We did one of these readings at, in Washington, D.C. There were some representatives from the Pentagon there. I asked, is there any way I can get more deeply involved? Uh, is there anything I can do? And I got a call a few weeks later introducing me to Seema Reza, who, who uh, leads these workshops. She, she said that one of the vets wanted to do a staged reading of collective poems that they were working and asked me if I would come down and direct them through that. And I, uh, I said yes, and the film was born out of that. Wow, and how'd you guys, how'd you feel when you guys first met? Were you already a fan of his work or? <laughs> I didn't know who Jeffrey was, but it wasn't you that I kind of like records? That, once I figure out who he was, <laughs> love him and Shaft, that's my heart. Um, the thing was, when, when Seema contacted me and said, did you come do the work? Mm -hmm. Even if President Obama had been there, I would have been focused on doing my work. Um, I'm in the position now where I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to healing. I want to be a better woman, a better mother. And so I came to do the work. So I was really focused. Uh, but then once I realized who he was, I was like starstruck. But, yeah. yeah. So but he gave us the space to come in and do the work. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't about Jeffrey. It wasn't about any of the vets. It was just about a group of people coming to do the work. Yeah, you seem like a natural teacher. Have you taught before? Yes. Or? Uh, I've got kids. That I <laughs> they teach me more than I teach them sometimes. But, you know, I've always appreciated uh, and enjoyed working with other actors. Um, mm -hmm. I've done a few workshops, uh, directed some smaller things here and there. And I, I, I've, uh, it's one of the things that I look forward to doing in the future more is working yes. with people around you know, uh, whether it's through directing or, yes. or uh, teaching, you know, I, I enjoy that process. But you were talking about the poetry and, you know, the beauty of, uh, you know, this work. That's all down to them. You know, you, uh, the, the one thing that so impressed me about them and, and, and made it all the more easier to work with um, it was that they were one committed to the process mm -hmm. right. and I discovered these are like incredible artists mm -hmm. you know and incredibly disciplined too mm -hmm. as you would expect from the military so you give them the direction and they do it once we get over a couple of hurdles we say hey that's not like how we go about doing this okay but that happens when you yeah. work you know, on any project is uh -huh. that you have to problem solve but at the core them as communicators and writers is what um, really brings the power of uh, this film uh, to the forefront and it's what made the, uh, the event that we pulled off uh, in January 2017 uh, all the more powerful. They're incredibly expressive, incredibly poetic, clear, and uh, they bring the fire of the truth uh, to the moment through those words. 
I, I think the film is so important, and, and we're definitely going to get into that. But, you know, I want to ask you a question, April, since you served for 26 years, right? I did. So my question for you is, you know, when you see, when you look at the military and how we promote the military, and mm -hmm. you get a chance to see how so many of our men and women um, in service are living, mm -hmm. you know, once they become vets. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you, do, do you think America loves the troops? Because every politician says it, everybody blows it up on TV, but then when I see, you know, I know there's like estimated, like there's tens of thousands of homeless vets right. in this country, which is like mind blowing to me. Right. I think we serve the purpose. And once you serve the purpose, um, I, I hate to say forgotten, but definitely placed to the side. Um, so what I would like to do, and, 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 and it's a call to action to, to my brothers and sisters out there, we can't wait for institutions and policies to change. They need to change. I believe they are trying to change, but that's going to happen over a long period of time. Right now, I can reach back to my brothers and sisters because I'm in a good place, reach back and provide some assistance. And I think we can do that for one another right now uh, because we are in a bad space. But I think waiting for institutions to change, politicians to change out, I think we just don't have that amount of time. But that's part of what you get when you sign up, right? Is that I mean, I, I would think so when you sign we up. We should get that. Uh, things have changed, though. We hadn't been in war in how long? So Not, two decades. Now. Yeah. So, I, I mean, we just weren't prepared for the aftermath. Mm -hmm. We were focused on going in there and taking care of business and keeping our country safe. Uh, and how long had it been before we had some action on our side right. of the world? So it, it just, I think it took us by storm. I think we weren't properly prepared and definitely are not prepared for the aftermath. But I think us coming together, uh, us as veterans, um, opening up our hearts and letting people know what's going on and helping others to understand where we stand, I think we can make this happen. As America, we can come together. It's not them and us, it's us together. That's what I love about this project is, you know, to your point, we hear a lot of chatter mm -hmm. about the vets and about the troops, but we rarely hear from the troops themselves, mm -hmm. the vets themselves, and to um, be a part of a project that allows yes. them space to be heard yes. is, uh, I think, uh, uh, is gratifying for me and also yes. really necessary for our country that it be taken in. It is. Yeah, that's why I say it's so important because you don't only get the artwork, but you get those personal stories to see the struggles, you, do. you, know, you know, juxtaposed against yep. what politicians always say, yep. like the talking points, and I think so many of us are tired of that, but then we can inspire Absolutely. by action. Um, well, even, you know, for example, at the Medal of Honor ceremonies, you mm -hmm. know, at the White House, which I always find so moving, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you hear the stories of what um, these folks have done, the valor, the courage. Um, but even then, you don't hear from them. No. Mm -hmm. It's somebody reading a citation Absolutely. that describes what they've done. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, the president uh, comes over and, you know, Absolutely. does his business. Uh, and they stand silently. So um, I think if we can hear directly from the vets themselves, and I'm really excited that we have a lot of veterans coming into the House of Representatives now, yes. right. I think we, um, as April says, might, uh, might start to see some institutional right. change. Well, you guys were happy with the results yesterday? Well, we're talking about our film right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do want to say that um, as a leader, and, I, and, and Retired or not, I will always be a leader. I have a responsibility to those that uh, are coming in the future, those that are still there, and those that I served with. And uh, uh, my piece was called Hear My Sister's Story. And mm -hmm. I would never disrespect any of my brothers or sisters by trying to communicate their story. But what I noticed traveling across the country and, and meeting the veterans in different spaces is that our pain is the same. It doesn't matter the circumstances in which got us there, the pain is the same. And so I called my piece Hear My Sister's Story. So I'm speaking on the behalf of many of my sisters. And um, you see me sitting here, and I got this opportunity. Mm -hmm. But trust and believe that I'm sitting here for the thousands that don't have the voice. Your story is very compelling, and we're not going to give too much of it away because we want people to see the story. Absolutely. But personally, I want to ask you, was it difficult you know, for you saying that and, and talking about it on camera? Um, so I had been on stage um, previously and, and, and did my story. Mm -hmm. And I think I even talk about the, uh, the time that my, my two sons, I have two adult sons that was in the audience, and uh, to see them be so proud of me standing up there uh, and speaking my truth and knowing that people aren't going to be ashamed of me. Um, but it would have killed me if I had kept the truth inside or mm -hmm. had it kept that in, inside. It's, I needed to part, speak it's it. It's part of that healing. It's, man, it's part of that healing. 
it was so cathartic. It's unbelievable. So, so both of you guys kind of alluded to this, but um, so I just want to ask it outright. It seems like we're at a time where our country is starting to take issues dealing with mental health more seriously. Do you think we're finally getting it right? Or do you think we're on a path? Well, um, as relates to the veterans issue, I think we have a lot of work to do. Um, I think, uh, as April described, the in there's institutional lag, there's policy lag, yes. and you see this is a generational thing. Yes. Uh, you know, going back to the Vietnam vets, the, yes. the World War II vets was a little bit of a different, different situation, but certainly starting with, with, with Vietnam uh, leading to now, you don't see that there has been the progress that one would expect given the rhetoric um, uh, you know, toward our vet, vets that politicians often serve us with. Um, so as relates to the vets, there's a lot of work to do. And again, you know, uh, April says they're not waiting for anybody, yeah. you know, to, uh, to, to come to their rescue. Yeah. They, they look after one another and that's yes. what we see in this film and what so impressed me about them, a thing that I didn't really appreciate as fully is that um, that uh, code in the military of looking out for one another, they carry on to this process of, of healing. So they talk as much about their own healing as they do about their brothers and sisters. Yes. So, you know, ideally with this film, mm -hmm. they can, you know, they can reach out to more mm -hmm. and maybe open up some other folks who were shut down right. and, uh, and, and even, you know, reach beyond that theater out into uh, mm -hmm. some other corners of the country. Yeah. Doing the real work. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned it in, we're talking about We Are Not Done Yet, a documentary truly inspiring documentary produced by Jeffrey Wright and features April Harris. April, um, if I'm a soldier and, you know, I, you know, just got my papers and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm my time is up and I'm coming back into the regular world yes. and I suffer from PTSD, what, yeah. what should I be doing? Take us through that journey. Uh, you definitely should, first and foremost, you've got to seek some help. Um, I, I say that we as veterans need to be as open and honest with our families as we can because we have some phenomenal families that are standing by us, but we're hard to deal with. When we're in denial, we're even harder to deal with. Mm -hmm. Go out there and get you some help, but take your family to the counseling meetings with you. We got to get our families involved and get them educated on how to deal with what we're doing. My children were, uh, thought I hated them for many years, and it wasn't. It was, it was, that, it was that, that aggressiveness. It was that anger. Uh, it was a misunderstanding about what was going on with me. But once I got educated and I educated my children, now we can begin to heal together. And, and they're, not, they're not naive, they're not ignorant about mental health. I have it. I'm still a phenomenal woman. I'm still their mother. But for a long time, I didn't feel like that. Mm -hmm. I felt like I wasn't worthy. And I can't begin to heal like that. I can't even communicate when I'm like So that. you said the family should definitely be involved the with the process. The family has got to be involved. They're wonderful. They support us. They've supported us. My children supported my entire career. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so someone's got to help us with that. Someone's got to help us. I don't think it's fair, as much as my children love me, for them now to be my caretaker after they've given up 20-plus uh, years of their lives following us around. Now they're going to be my caretaker? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the government doesn't want to even give them enough money to be. Mm -hmm. and, and then what about their medical care? No one's paying for that. But I mean, out, outside of um, connecting with family, mm -hmm. is there anything systemically a soldier should be doing? Definitely got to go to the VA, the place where we dread going to. Uh, going to the VA feels like you've uh, been put out to pasture. In our minds, and even for my generation, it's like old people go to VA. A lot of us didn't even think of ourselves as veterans for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so we got to get rid of those misnomers. We got to get educated within ourselves so that we can help others, uh, you know, help us to heal. I think the one thing that, uh, that they kept referring to in the process was just not isolating oneself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, not, yes. You know, and, yes. And, and not shutting down. Yes. And I, and I think what our film is going to do is open up the, the opportunity for more dialogue. It's going to be, I think, multiple venues, but it's going to open up the dialogue. Hey, that's me up there. Oh, somebody gets it. Oh, they're not afraid to stand up there. And as a leader, I owe that to those that I've served with. And I'm sure when you research different characters that you played over the years, you've always, you know, learned something brand new or, or developed something that you can take with you on your journey. But how does working on a film like this, how does it change you? Is it similar to you researching a character or does it hit you in a, in a different way? Uh, this is a unique experience. This has been a unique experience for me, a unique set of collaborators. Um, I, what, what do I take from this? We're still taking, we're still on this journey, you know? Yes. So I'm still, I'm just, I just, I'm, as regards the film, 
really pleased. I, we did our best with this. Um, after Serene Herabidian, who's our director, captured the images, mm -hmm. uh, which he did beautifully, HBO yes. came on board yes. and gave us a little bit of funding to go do a bit more to mm -hmm. capture the portraits mm -hmm. that you see mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the five veterans that we feature. Um, and we took that footage once we got it all together. We had some incredible music that was composed by a musician named Wytold, who works <laughs> with the vets not only on this film, but yes. works in other music workshops as yes. well. Uh, we brought some, uh, some powerful musicians together with him. We had all of this material. We had their words and their stories and their images at the center of it. And I just took great care to make sure that we shape this film into yes. the most beautiful piece of yes. visual poetry and oral poetry that we could that reflected the spirit that I got from, 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 from my brothers and sisters. Yes. You know? So uh, what did I take from it? Uh, I don't know what I took from it. I'm just, um, I'm just seriously proud of them yeah. and I'm proud of this film. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, I think it's really inspiring, and I think it's what we need mm -hmm. to take a step forward. Because I mean, you know, even like people, I didn't go through the service, but I grew up in the street, and right. you know, okay. it's a different type of trauma. Yep. But it's also it's a similar yep. pain. Yes. In some ways, it's not a different trauma. Yes. In some ways, it's the exact same trauma. Yes. And the yes. exact same response or lack of response to yes. it. Yes. Um, you know, going back to this theater of war piece, we actually did some readings in Brooklyn around gun violence. Mm -hmm. You have the same injuries, mm -hmm. the same tensions, mm -hmm. the same shame, the same anger, all yep. of these things. Yep. And like with in the military, in certain neighborhoods, many neighborhoods, most probably it goes untreated, mm -hmm. unacknowledged mm -hmm. even. And mm -hmm. I think the some of the challenges that we see in neighborhoods that yes. are, you know, that see disproportionate amounts of violence are, yes. are related to that trauma. I did a film just before working with the vets that we shot in a maximum security prison in Indiana, largely with incarcerated mm -hmm. men in the cast. Mm -hmm. And the thing, this was even before I worked on this project, the thing that I noticed, the thing that I felt walking into that space, beginning to work with them, was trauma. Yes. And it was, Yes, the trauma that they delivered onto others because they did. Yes. These were men who had done some serious crime and, com and, 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 and delivered some serious injury on mm -hmm. people, harm. Mm -hmm. But you also felt within them mm -hmm. injury, Absolutely. damage that had gone untreated, that still was going untreated inside that facility. Injuries that began when they were children, mm -hmm. growing up in certain neighborhoods, being involved in certain activities that brought about uh, what I think can very accurately be, des be described as PTSD. Absolutely. So I just say that to say when you there's, a, there's a serious overlap yep. between some of the conditions that folks find themselves uh, in coming out of certain neighborhoods and ending up in, incarcerated mm -hmm. with some of the, the, the trauma that folks experience from Absolutely. whether it be from war or sexual violence, yeah. there's a lot of overlap there. Mm -hmm. yeah, trauma is like the big, funky, stinky, noticeable elephant in the room that everyone walks past. And I feel like there may be a person who needs to hear a message from you guys because you mm -hmm. have a different skill set and a level Absolutely. of knowledge in dealing with trauma and approaching it head on. Mm -hmm. So um, if someone's watching this and they were in the service or they experienced some type of trauma and they don't know what steps they should take what would you say to them if you had like a minute? <laughs> They've got to get some help. You, we cannot do this alone. And, and when you're in that dark space, you, you don't know, you feel like no one cares. Even if someone reaches out to you, you cannot feel it. You are numb. I used to, call, I used to say that I was walking dead. Literally, I was dead. So it, it doesn't matter. You become high risk at your behavior because you're already dead. What difference does it make? Mm. If I'm not here, what difference does it make? Is anybody going to even notice that I'm not why here? why your story is so important. It, 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 it's, it's painful. But I'm letting my brothers and sisters, whether you served or not, know that you're not alone. And it hurts like hell. But I'm still standing. Still standing. Still standing. There's, I, I represent hope. I want to represent hope. Healing. Healing hero. I mean, that's, you know... I don't know, uh, uh, maybe there's another, but I, I think a great tool that I've yes. seen them take away from this is a commitment to helping others. Yes. Mm -hmm. Using that, those experiences, that injury, that pain, yep. 
wrestling with it and saying, yep. you know, yep. what I can do with this, now that I have it, I have the knowledge of yeah. it, and I can reach yes. out to someone else. Yes. So someone else doesn't have to experience right. that. I want you guys to look right into the camera and tell everyone where they can see the film. You can see the film tomorrow night, the 8th of November at 8 p.m. on HBO. Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys for coming out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.